Hello, everyone. Hello, Don and Tina. Let me know if you can hear me or not. Make sure everything is working. Make sure my glasses are straight, all that good stuff. <laughs> Yay. All right. Very good. So thank you for joining me today. This is fun. Um, I've been trying to do like one video a week here on Crowdcast and the replays are available on my YouTube channel. So today I wanted to show you my alarms because I didn't even know that the alarms um, on a phone or a tablet could do this. <laughs> and so I was pretty excited when I saw that not only could I set an alarm to start, but I could set the alarm to actually play a song on the phone or on the tablet. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that this is something that any device can do. Mine are Apple, but I'm pretty sure I should have Googled it beforehand, but I'm pretty sure that they all do this. And this is just the default app. This is not a special app. This is the clock default app. Um, so for, yeah, that's what I thought. Good. Good to confirm. Thank you, Tina. <laughs> um, because I think that Dawn, uh, Lady Desk, does this also. So I have done, I've used alarms and timers as kind of prompts because <laughs> to help me remember when to start something or to give that little extra nudge to do the routine, but not to the extent that some people have, including my friend, Dawn Garrett. And when I met her in person, I saw her list of alarms. I was like, whoa. And I did actually try something like that at one point years ago, and I didn't like it. And so I just kind of wrote it off. But I am doing it again this year and where I have alarms for most of the transitions in our day. And there are a couple of reasons why I've made that change, especially after having it not work very well. One of the things, one of the reasons why I don't think it worked well the first time I tried it was that I didn't buffer in any margin time or that time to gather things to go, or it was too much. So, you know, like where you budget for the snooze and then end up snoozing the snooze <laughs> happens. Um, and then I also, because I things were then not a, quite the right time, I didn't have my stuff together, so I didn't do it. Hey, we're talking about you. <laughs> Saying you were the inspiration. Oh, you can see my Kleenex here. I don't have any pockets today, so that's where my Kleenex went. Nice. Um all the alarms. You inspired me. So I have way more alarms this year. Now I've tried it before and it didn't work because um, I don't think that I needed to stick to the times that I chose for an alarm um, at the time where I was trying it as I do now. So there are different seasons of life and it did not work for me in the season where I was trying it out. And then, so I wrote it off as a strategy that doesn't work, period, end of story. And that was not an alarm. That was a notification. <laughs> um, the difference now is that I have more students, more things going on, more appointments, things that actually, it matters what time they happen. And so I think now is the time to try it. Um, big kids, it's different. It's different managing multiple people who are supposed to be learning self-management. So you have to kind of get them started, let them loose and make sure that you touch base with them again. And also, you know, they're off doing their own thing, but there are times where they all have to gather and you don't want to be, or I don't want I think we all don't want to be the nagging mom who's like going around calling everyone and saying, no, really, 
or, you know, it's kind of like at church or whatever, when the kids say, can we go home now? And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. One minute. And then you start another conversation. <laughs> maybe it's not the kids, maybe it's your husband, you know, there's usually someone in the family that's like, can we go home? You're like, oh, sure. But then, you know, you start another conversation and it's 10, 15, 20 minutes later. So it, um, yes, it, it's, life is just different when the majority of children in your household require you for everything that they need, <laughs> including using the bathroom and everything is different and timers. Good. You, can you close the door again? Timers don't work for that because you can't put those kind of things on a timer. You can't put dirty diapers on the timer or whatever, and you have to deal with them when they occur. So the more, it, when the younger kids outweigh the older kids, you really have to do a go with the flow. And last time I tried all the alarms and timers, I had more younger kids than older kids and it didn't work. I, and then, so I thought schedules, with times don't work for families. I was like, no, schedules with times don't work when you're managing mostly younger kids who need you at their side. And you have to just kind of be that popcorn popping around. You just have to be kind of all aware and doing what needs to be done and responding to emergencies. And when it's more bigger kids than younger kids, it's different because um, you have to keep tabs on what they're doing without necessarily knowing exactly what they're doing or having any say about the order that they're doing the work. Um, so uh, especially when you have times where people do need to get together because those transition times or the times where you know, people could be totally scattered, but they need to come together for morning time, for any kind of lesson time or reading time, maybe even meal times, EHAP time. EHAP is our afternoon picking up time. Um, we need to find a way to not be the nagging mom that's just going around yelling and not being listened to, to because the kids probably know that they actually have five or 10 minutes before you're starting. And so they don't want to, but you're trying to get everything together and it feels like craziness, right? So since last year, we started off last year this way. I think I trialed it the year before that, but we've been over a full year now of using a song to call everyone to morning time. I tried a bell, um, which is kind of harsh and clangy, um, it's better than a harsh and clangy mom voice, but um, I picked a song and told everyone, okay, when this song starts, it's time for morning time. You have until the end of the song to be at the table with your binder. So it gives everyone a little bit of transition margin time. They have three and a half minutes to wrap up what they were doing, you know, finish the math problem, put some, put a bookmark in their book, get a drink of water, whatever it is they want to do before morning time, um, they can do it. And then we, there's this deadline that's easy to hear because, you know, you know, like, oh, when the bridge comes, I only have like 30 seconds more. So the song is kind of giving them a clue as to like, your time's running out. And then we can all be sit, seated with our stuff. Now this only works if as the mother, I use this as my cue also. Cause sometimes there were, there have been times where I've turned on the song to get everyone together. And it's kind of like, sometimes I send them to the car just so then I can get my stuff together without them underfoot. <laughs> and so they actually go sit in the car in the driveway for five or more minutes. Um, there have been a few times where I've used the morning song, morning time song like that. And um, yeah, not, it starts uh, eroding the credibility and they have a justified reason to be annoyed with mom, which is not the way we want to start morning time. So I have to really use that song time to get my stuff together. 
and not things like, okay, so I'm going to start this and then I'm going to start a lot of one and start, start like, I'm going to do all these things before morning time. And it's, you know, 10 minutes worth of things instead of three minutes. I've got to give myself only three minutes too. Um, so yeah. And it's one of those things where your family dynamics, you're going to have to do some trial and error to figure out what will work. Consistency is credibility. That's the truth. Um, and if you, it's also modeling, right? We have to model what we expect. So if we can't pull our stuff together to show up at the table or we aren't prioritizing being at the table, then they aren't going to either. So that's the caveat. It's only going to work if you make it work for yourself also. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. I don't, we haven't had a consequence for being late. Um, the only person that I've had an issue with being late is the youngest who's four. And so this was when she was three. Um, I think one time this year, she also had an issue where it was, you know, we just started without her and then she came down crying cause we started without her. And, um, so I, th we would, if we needed a consequence, we would, so far we we started off and I just said, that's what it means. There were a few times where I had to, you know, the song was wrapping up. I didn't see someone and I did go find them like get, get to the table. Um, but there does need to be some kind of consequence. If you get a little pushback, um, it would totally be something where I'd give them an extra job in the afternoon or um, sometimes... I've used, you know, for different things, not being there on time. We haven't had the issue with this, but we have definitely have with other things. And consequences I've used are an extra math drill page, um, losing friend privileges, using screen privileges, uh, getting an extra job. Those are kind of my four, four biggies. And I kind of use the one that's targeted to my audience at the time. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, she didn't want to be there. And then she didn't want us to start without her. It's one of those irrational toddler moments that are inevitable. Um, yeah, it is hard when modeling. It's the problem. Uh, so that's, we did that for morning time for over a year now. And I think it was just seeing Don's alarms that I realized, wait a sec. I can use that for the other things that we need to do also, <laughs> like EHAP. So we have our afternoon EHAP time, which is where we all get together and clean up the main level. And <laughs> on modeling, I had one of my sons remind me uh, this summer that uh, I had written that EHAP was mom with the kids, and that's not what I was doing. And so I've had to repent and join in and model the e-happing again and be really on top of consistency and keeping my word and all that. Um, so we're back on e-hap all together and not me sending them off and uh, using a song. So we had an e-hap song that I turned on after we were all gathered together and starting, that's one of the first things I would do. But I rang a bell to get everyone all together or I pretty much rang a bell. And um, I was like, wait a sec, what if, and part of the problem with that is then if I have to do it, it's something I put off starting. <laughs> so now the alarm goes off at five and I have the alarm goes off on five at five with the song and another little alarm, a uh, silent alarm goes off about, I think I give myself three minutes beforehand and I've set up several, I, I set up one before morning time too, where it's just a silent alarm. There's no sound. It's only a vibrating alarm. And I didn't even know that that was an option didn't look closely, but if you scroll up, there's the option to have 
sound none, and then different patterns of silent alert. And uh, so that was pretty exciting. So now I can give myself a little warning, which is helpful. It's not just out of the blue and it's like drop everything and run. <laughs> it's I can wrap my head around, okay, I'm going to have to put this down. I'm going to have to be, you know, in the main area and start. It's like gives me a moment to wrap my head around getting on my game. And that has been a key help this time around. And it's only been a little while. We haven't been doing this for very long yet. So we're still ironing it out. But it's still enough that it's the exciting. We're still in the exciting phase, the honeymoon phase. So our EHAP song goes off. And then we start. Everyone should be cleaning up in the same room together during that song. And uh, each person has a special day. And it usually takes two, sometimes three songs. So whoever's day it is gets to pick the song after the song that calls us all together, which is easy winners. <laughs> a little ragtime to call us all. Yeah, the alarm, I setting more alarms <laughs> made it helpful. And also, where the song plays instead of a signal noise. Um, it also has helped make myself and everyone else a lot more um, not resentful of it. You know, it's not like a blaring alarm or an annoying noise that you're like, oh, it's like, oh, fun, music. Um, Yeah, a warning alarm. That was, it's really been key so far for making this work because then I'm ready for that alarm instead of that alarm catching me off guard. Let's see, Stacy, could you re ask that question? I'm not, could you clarify? Oh, for they, we don't sing along. No, the song choice is just for the deadline, for getting everyone together, but giving them also a little bit of space to wrap up what they were doing and get there. It's not like when I ring the bell, everyone, it means drop everything and come right away. The song is, you know, a three minute, two minute, three minute bell where you have to be here before it's over. So, um, and you know, it sets the tone, it's more upbeat, it helps the mood. So um, it kind of is doing double duty there. Um, after, no, um, they pick the music to listen to during e half time. So after the morning time song, we're just all around the table and we start. But for e half, it usually, we have music going the whole time we're e happing. So there's now the first song, which calls us all to get started. And then whoever's day it is gets to pick what the song that plays next. Um, yeah. Well, so we're talking about different times of the day. It's different. Um, and the EHAP time is the same as morning chore time. Um, I set an alarm that lets everyone know breakfast is closed. It's time to start your chores and get ready for the day. So a song, let a song just starts turning on, starts playing. And, um, so instead of me going around and saying, you know, <laughs> you really need to get started on your stuff or you're not going to have time or you're not going to be done or because there is a con you get an extra practice job after lunch if you didn't have your morning things done before morning time. So that's the that's why they need to have their things done in their mind. And so the song alerts them to the fact like this is where you need to get started now. Um. And one of my ways that I've done, you know, composer study, it's like cheater composer study, is that we listen to classical music during our chore time. That's the listening time for classical music. And so the person whose day it is gets to pick from my classical playlist. So I have a playlist that's set aside that has classical options. And each day, the person gets to choose which composer. 
So for a while we did like one composer for a whole term and I was turning it on. Now they get to turn on the music and choose each person chooses a composer. So that's kind of fun because they've developed favorite composers that they are choosing. So that's been a fun thing to watch. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the song that starts playing is Mars bringer of war. And I needed to find um, the one that I wanted, but I couldn't find it was um, flight of the Valkyries. That's the one I wanted, <laughs> but it, so it's a classical song, but still kind of upbeat and funny or fun. And th that's about the level of fun that I do. I'm not a fun mom. Uh, but then once that goes silent, you know, the person whose day it is, is all eager beaver to come over and pick what's next. And then we're rolling on our chore time. And it's a clear, um, a clear signal on what time of day it is in case people haven't been looking at the clock. <laughs> So I've been really happy about how much that's helped us now that we're managing multiple independent children um, and they are all doing their own thing a lot of the day, but there are still times where we have to come together or get things started. Um, Mars is Holst, but uh, right of the Valkyries is Wagner. Wagner. Um so, yes. So, right. <laughs> Debating about adding music in my day. That's interesting. So it's been helpful that the song that I, instead of being responsible myself to turn the song on, now it just is going to come on. So partly for me, that is... Uh, making the toddler me, <laughs> the inner toddler. Um, it's reminding me of what the parent me has decided is best. And so when the alarm goes off or whatever, um, it's been no. <laughs> toddler you is not in charge. Let parent you be in charge and do the right thing. And yeah. Yeah, often we don't have a lot of music on in the house because after piano practice and just stuff, I was like, there's too much noise and I don't, I can't take it. But these, so we did, we needed more music, fun music, good music in the day. So th this has helped. And uh, yeah, so it's been my way to silence, silence the inner toddler, listen to my wise decisions, my wise self, <laughs> do the right thing, do the right next thing. And I think that was one reason why it didn't work out for me the first time I tried it years ago was because every time that alarm came on, I debated. I was the, you know, lawyer eight-year-old <laughs> arguing with my, you know, it's just this argument inside my own head. And, um, yeah. So I just wanted to stop it because it, every time the alarm came off, it was a debate and a tug of war between who is going to win and, so, and all the inner arguments and blah. Now it's like, no, this is the right thing to do and I need to do it. But another reason why this is the season where it works and that was not the season where it works is that we have, um, appointments. We have a lot of stuff that has to get done in the day. And so before the things we had to get done in the day were fairly interchangeable um, and nothing had a real deadline. And so the hard lines of alarms and timers wasn't really necessary. And so that was one reason why it didn't really work. And now at this point in this stage of our game, um, we need to use our time well or it's not going to get done. If we don't use our time well, no one will have any playtime. They will have no free time. It, school will take until 4 p.m. And so that's one of the incentives that the kids have. It's like if you show up on time and you get your work done 
in this you know reasonable time then you will have free time but if we didn't if we just were loosey-goosey with everything it would take all day as it is if we if we stay on beat you know on target then we have we have a good pace and we get it all done and um it does happen the the inner inner toddler struggle is real and so you know sometimes we need that sympathy too with our kids and, and realize yet yeah, you know I do that too. You're doing it out loud to me, but I do it inside to me. And that's one reason why I'm tired of it. <laughs> um, so when I look at my weekly time budget now, you know, I see one time's not as good as another, which I don't think that's exactly a Charlotte. It, I can't remember if that's a Charlotte Mason quote or someone writing about her, which one that came from, but one time is not as good as another when you're just dealing with toddler preschooler baby you know one time is as good as another you're you're living life and catching the balls and and juggling but when you're trying to have a full school day and still have free time you've got to keep a certain pace or else it'll you know work expands to fill the time allotted to it none of us you know we have <laughs> enough to do and enough older kids now that no one wants school to go all day. So this is how we make sure that doesn't happen. Um, my, we're still, my older kids class, extra class still hasn't started. So they have some new school work that will come, um, that will be added in. But right now I'd say that they're average my high schoolers average is three and a half to four hours a day of schoolwork and I can't remember whether or not that counts as piano and then the seventh grader is three ish hours a day for the for five days a week that's about I think that's about how it averages out so, um, but that was really, really difficult. The first, when my oldest moved into seventh grade and we kind of had more of that, you know, upper school, like this is your work and it's kind of kicked up a notch it was a really hard transition. Um, and thankfully we went through it with the old, oldest and the second has kind of picked up a few things. Uh, so it's not been quite um, the struggle with subsequent children as it was with the oldest it was a just a transition year and you know sometimes those are legitimately hard and you have to push through and practice and make it through <laughs> so um yes Whew. now i i think that even high schoolers should have plenty of free time so um so I know that, I mean, I've had conversations with people that disagree and think that high schoolers need to be, you know, constructively occupied or whatever, like their job is their school or whatever. And I just disagree with that. So not doing any other programs, but just kind of piecing and making my own thing. <laughs> like, this is my limit. If it doesn't fit here, something's got to give. So, um, yeah. So this was fun and thank you for joining me. Um, speaking of uh, allotted times and all that, <laughs> kind of two to four is now my slot for internet things. M one thing that our new school schedule, our new fall schedule uh, makes sure of is that I don't have unlimited computer time. <laughs> like I've got everything off times and then slotted times. So hopefully this will help me use my time more effectively. And that means ending these within half an hour. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So thanks for joining me. This is a lot of fun. And the replay will also be available on my YouTube channel by the end of the day. <laughs>